Hey guys, it's John here. Welcome back to the channel where we explore the microcosmos of sea monkeys and other instant pets. I have a real treat for today's video, an unboxing and review of the Sea Monkeys Robo Diver Kit. Those of you familiar with the rarer sea monkey tanks will know that this is a bit of a white whale amongst collectors, so I'm really excited to share the experience with you today. This set was released by Explorer Toy in 2002, though I don't believe it was produced in particularly large numbers at the time, which is why finding them today is so difficult. It was also around the same time that Harold von Braunhut, the creator of Sea Monkeys, passed away, and so there was likely some restructuring at the company happening during that time, which may have affected production. After many months of searching online for one of these, I never saw a single one come up for sale, but then a package showed up on my doorstep from my good friend and fellow collector Todd Machen. It was full of some amazing Sea Monkey gifts, and I was absolutely stoked when I noticed the surprise of a Robo Diver kit sitting at the bottom of the box. Todd Machen also does the official illustrations for Transcience too, so you've probably seen some of his amazing artwork on the newer Sea Monkey products. So thanks for donating this set to the channel Todd, as always your generosity and help for these videos is much appreciated. While researching this kit, I discovered that it came in two box variants, the white one I have here, and another more polished version that shows off the box contents. According to George Adamian, who was Explorer Toys Vice President, both versions of the kit were sold simultaneously, depending on the preference of the dealers at the time. Though I had assumed that the white box kit here was an earlier release of the set, because there have been a few changes made to the artwork in the open box variant. The first and most obvious is that it's had a name change. The white box simply says, The Amazing Life Sea Monkeys Robo Diver, while the open box variant adds the tagline, The Amazing Life Sea Monkeys and Their Mystery Robo Diver. I'm not entirely sure what the mystery here is to be honest. Perhaps it's how the Robo Diver is able to rise and descend in the tank by seemingly invisible force, but that's just my guess. I'd love to hear your theories down in the comments. The other change I spotted is that they added the three sea monkey antennae to the top of the diver's head, which is definitely an important fix. Neither the racing helmet on the Speedway, nor the astronaut's helmet on the Space Shuttle kit were able to contain those rigid antenna, so I'm glad to see sea monkey lore intact with them coming out of the diver's helmet here too. The open box version gives a nice little brief summary of how this kit works. It says, a robotic diver plunges into the depths of your tabletop sea monkey aquarium, bearing food to your hungry pets, all under your invisible control. Command the robot to pause in midstream, defying gravity, it obeys without strings, magnets, or any visible support. Is it magic? Is it supernatural? Or is it something so strange that it seems to be out of this world? Only you will learn the secret of the mystery robo diver, so prepare to really amaze everyone, even yourself. Now those of you familiar with my channel will know that I don't really consider myself a collector of Sea Monkey products. Rather my intention in getting them is so I can make these video reviews so you all have a chance to experience them too. So let's open it up and take a look at what's inside. There are three different sets of paperwork in here. The first two are generic instructions that were included with all Sea Monkey kits at the time. This one has an order form with different parts and supplies. Many of these aren't sold anymore, but I really wish they were. I can't believe how cheap some of them are too. The Porta Pet Pocket Aquarium Playpen is $4, and the Live Sea Monkeys Racing Game is only $10. I bought one of these racing sets recently from eBay and paid over $200 for it, so seeing it here so cheap is a little shocking. If you're interested in my review of this product, check out the link in the top right hand corner. There's also an order form for a diploma certifying you as a Sea Monkey Scientist. I believe you can actually still purchase these from the official Sea Monkeys website. I'm kind of just hoping that if I make enough of these videos, I'll eventually be awarded an honorary degree from the Trans Science Crustacean College, without having to pay the $20 fee. This here is the instruction manual that I'm most interested in though. It's been made especially for this set, and goes into great detail about how to operate the RoboDiver toy mechanism. Instead of reading it all aloud, I'll just explain to you how it works when I unbox the tank, but you're welcome to pause the video if you fancy reading through everything. I really love the illustrations in here. They're simple and clear, and for me, seeing personalised operating instructions like this makes the kit feel that much more special. The contents of this kit is quite elaborate. In fact, it comes with more accessories than you usually expect to see, even with the larger Sea Monkey box sets. But I'll show you soon how most of them have been included because they're necessary to operate the Robo Diver toy. As always, this kit comes with the three packets we need to set up a Sea Monkey colony. But unfortunately, after 20 years of sitting in this box, they've absorbed a fair bit of moisture, as they feel quite damp meaning that there's no chance they'll hatch, even if I did try. I've got a brand new Sea Monkey starter kit here though, that I'll be using for this tank setup today instead. They've also included one of the older style yellow feeding spoons, with the smaller scoop at one end for feeding, and the larger one on the other end for adding in Plasma 3, which is not actually a product I've ever used before, but I think I will give it a try at some point in the future when I make a video about all of the extra novelty packs. There's a purple aqua lesion here too. 
I've got a few of these from some of my other Sea Monkey sets, and they appear to come in varying colours, as they also have a yellow and a clear one. This is basically just a tool for aerating your tank, but the opening at the end is large enough to also allow you to pick up your Sea Monkeys and move them around if you need to. When it comes to aeration, I prefer to use an electric air pump with an airline permanently bubbling in my tanks, so that's what I'll probably do for this set here too. The next two tools in here are not something I've ever seen included in a Sea Monkey kit before. A small pipette and a long pair of tweezers which they refer to in the manual as forceps. These are both needed for the RoboDiver mechanism to work, so I'll explain exactly what they're used for in a moment. And here's the tank itself. Its cylindrical design is quite similar to that of the much more common Magic Castle and Mars themed tanks, although this one features a screw on lid, and it's so you can create an airtight seal within the tank, which is important for the unique feeding method with the RoboDiver. The plastic base at the bottom has a nautical theme, with the words Amazing Life Sea Monkeys Robo Diver written at the bottom. The tank's substrate features a purple octopus, which we can assume is a kraken, a giant mythological creature that has a reputation for pulling down ships with its huge tentacles. The kraken is guarding a chest of sunken gold and treasure, similar to what you also often see with dragon mythology. You'll also notice a small white circle at the bottom here. That's a landing pad for the Robo Diver, which offers a mini challenge to the operator. This tank also comes with two lids, which is really nice as it's not something I've seen with any of my other Sea Monkey tanks. This one here is called the Air Event Cover. It doesn't screw on like the other one, it just sits on top. It has two small holes in the sides which allow for air circulation, as well as a magnifying glass on top, which can be removed for easy feeding or aeration with the included Aqualish. This large hole is really handy, because it will also allow me to put in an airline in a small heater, if I decide to go that route. The Air Event is a lid which you're supposed to use day to day, as its ability to allow air circulation is the most practical of the two options. The other lid though is a little more interesting. It's called the pressure cap. It features a large orange deep sea diver's helmet on top, which can be squeezed on the sides. Its purpose is to allow you to change the air pressure inside the tank. By squeezing on the diver's helmet, the internal pressure will increase, while releasing it will return the pressure back to normal. And here's the star of the show, the Sea Monkey Robo Diver itself. This small yellow and orange plastic figurine is about 3cm tall, it's carrying a small food basket, and has a small hole in the base of its feet. The purpose of this little guy is for a very unique way to feed your sea monkeys their growth food. Once they're a few weeks old, you can prepare the diver for its first plunge into the depths of your tank. Using the provided pipette, you fill the hole in its feet with a little tank water. If you get the amount just right, when you put it into the tank it should float, with just the three antennae sitting above the surface. After that you tightly screw on the pressure cap, and squeeze down on the helmet. The increase in air pressure will cause the robo diver to sink to the bottom of the tank, and it'll stay there until you release your pressure on the helmet again. In theory, I should be able to lightly squeeze and then gently let go, making the robo diver rise and fall at will. Getting it to land perfectly on the white landing circle is an added challenge, for a little extra fun. Then comes the fun part. After picking up the diver with the yellow tweezers, you can add in a little of packet number 3, the growth food, into its basket. And then after screwing the cap back on, you send it on another plunge to the bottom of the tank to feed your sea monkeys. The instructions suggest you continue changing the pressure so it moves up and down, dispersing the food throughout the water as it rises and falls. I can't wait to test this out and see if it actually works, but first we need to set up the tank, and wait a few weeks for them to grow to adulthood, so let's get started. I'll start off by filling this tank with distilled water. I don't see a fill line on here, so I'll just take it a centimetre or two from the top. Next I need to add in packets number 1 and 2, the water purifier and instant live eggs. If you've seen any of my other videos setting up sea monkey tanks, you'll know that I don't bother waiting the recommended 24 to 36 hours between adding in these two packets. Honestly, I don't think it's necessary if you're using fresh distilled water, and in my experience I always get a great yield of hatchlings regardless. What is important though, is that you mix all of the salts up really well, and Aqualish Air Pump is my favourite tool to use for this, and it only takes a minute or so. And that's it for now, we just have to wait for them to hatch and grow. I'm going to leave this tank on my shelf next to my Sea Monkey Space Shuttle tank. Honestly, having these two tanks next to each other is like a childhood dream come true. Better late than never, I guess. There's an under tank heat mat here that will help keep them at their optimal 26 degrees Celsius, which is best for fast growth. These purple grow lights surrounding the tank will assist in promoting algae growth too, which is always helpful if you want a nice healthy colony. I'll add an airline into here in about a week or so, once there are plenty of babies swimming around. I'll check back in with you guys in 2-3 to three weeks, so we can finally see the Robo Diver in action. Hey guys, so it's been 3 weeks since I set this tank up, and I just spotted the first pair mating today, which is a good sign that these guys are reaching adulthood now. Their growth has been surprisingly quick over these last few weeks, probably because we had a bit of a cold spell here in New Zealand, 
so I decided to also put a small heater into their tank, which probably sped up their development. Before we test out the Robo Diver toy, I want to give you guys a quick review of this tank since I've been using it for a few weeks now. First off, the lid. I absolutely love the large hole up top. It allowed me to put my heater and an airline into the tank really easily, so from that perspective it's been very practical. I have noticed a lot of the salt accumulating on top of the lid though. I assume this is from small splashes caused by the bubbles from the airline. It's not too much of an issue to just wash it back into their water when I do my weekly top up though. You'll also notice that the algae growth in here has been amazing too, especially considering it's only taken 3 weeks to establish itself like this. It seems that there's a bit of space between the plastic substrate on the bottom and the walls of the tank, where the algae falls between. While this is a potential hazard where baby brine shrimp could get stuck, it also provides a safe harbour for algae to culture and grow, without being eaten by the sea monkeys. So overall I think it's actually a really good thing. In fact there's so much algae in here now, that it basically blocks up those small gaps, so I don't think it's even possible for the babies to get stuck. In some of my other tanks, the adult sea monkeys eat the algae so quickly that you can barely see it anymore, so I quite like this accidental feature. The only thing I'm not a huge fan on is the tank's cylindrical shape. I find it really relaxing being able to just sit and watch my sea monkeys swim around the tank, and the distortion caused by the curved plastic makes it a little harder to do that. It's also not ideal for capturing macro videos of the sea monkeys either, though this is probably an issue that's more specific to me, rather than your average sea monkey keeper. Overall I give this tank 4 out of 5 stars, and it's now my second favourite behind the ocean volcano tank. So I think the sea monkeys are finally large enough for us to test out the Robo Diver toy. I've not fed these guys for a few days now, so I think today we can give them a full scoop. First I need to make sure I can get it to work, which means filling the Robo Diver with a little water, and putting it into the tank so its antennae float just above the surface. I'm glad they've provided a small pipette for this, because it definitely makes it easier than using an aqua leash. Apparently this can take a little trial and error to get right, so I'll see how I go. It just sunk to the bottom the first time I put it in, which meant there wasn't enough air in the bottom of the Robo Diver, but after a few tries I did manage to get it to float. The next step is to put the pressure cap on. I need to screw this on really well to make sure there's an airtight seal, so that when I squeeze the orange helmet, the little Robo Diver descends to the bottom of the tank. If all goes well, it should rise and fall as I squeeze and release. I'm feeling quite relieved that this still works. I was a little worried that the rubber might have degraded because of its age, but it's working well. By squeezing just halfway, I can get the Robo Diver to hover in place, which is a cool little trick. Now that I've got the hang of it, it's time for a feeding. I think this part will be a little tricky, but I'll give it my best shot. When putting the food in, I need to remove the top half of the Robo Diver's body from the water, while making sure its feet are still submerged. I'll put just one level scoop of growth food from the Sea Monkey feeding spoon into its basket. And now it's finally time for the Robo Diver to make a delivery down to the bottom of the tank, to feed the Sea Monkeys for the very first time. So my first impression is that while a cool idea, it doesn't really work particularly well. As soon as I put the Robo Diver into the water, half of the food floated out of the basket up to the water's surface, and the rest of it just kind of stayed in the basket, no matter how many times I moved it up and down. It's definitely fun to play with though, and really that's what this kit is all about. I am really impressed at how well the Robo Diver pressure mechanism works too. It's really cool to finally see it in action after all these years. So, now for my overall thoughts on the Robo Diver kit. I'm definitely a big fan. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this is a very rare set, and to be honest I think that's a bit of a shame, because the tank really is a great design. It's not dissimilar in many ways to the Mars and Magic Castle tanks, but I prefer how open this one is, allowing you to see your sea monkeys a little more clearly. The Robo Diver mechanism is definitely interesting, but it's probably not something I'll use regularly, because it's pretty inconvenient, and I prefer the standard feeding method with the yellow spoon. The idea of it though, is that it's supposed to just be a bit of extra fun for kids, so it definitely ticks that box. I don't think Transcience will be releasing another product like this anytime soon. It's just a little too finicky to be worth their while, and the Magic Castle of Mars tanks are so similar in design, that they're already supplying that part of the market. I am a big fan of themed novelty tank designs though, and I'd love to see new ones again in the future. I'd love to hear your tank ideas down in the comment section too. Thanks for coming with me today on this journey into the microcosmos of sea monkeys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and consider subscribing to my channel. To those of you interested in getting a sea monkey kit of your own, I've put an Amazon link down in the description, with a bunch of affordable tank options, and some great accessories that will help you raise a colony of healthy adult sea monkeys. Any purchases made through this link give me a tiny commission, which really helps out the channel, and will allow me to continue making content like this for you guys. I'm always happy to answer your sea monkey related questions too, so you're welcome to ask those down in the comment section below. Make sure to check me out on Instagram and TikTok too, for some extra behind the scenes content. Links are down in the description and I'll catch you in the next video.